you have brought me back. Did you miss me? No, no. <laughs> you just need my help, right? You're so good at getting into trouble. <laughs> so lost. Before you open your mouth, and say something very silly. I want you to consider if you bringing me here really helps you. And I want you to really think about it. Has this ever helped you? Even once? Maybe I've helped you once or twice in the short term, but I just give you one thing and then you lose two more, right? Always, always one step forward and two steps back with you. And you bring me here, you beg, you plead, you pray to me to just sweep away your problems, even though the next day there will be more. Always more than you can handle. More than I can help you with, honestly. Do you even know what you want? Do you know what you need? What would help you? Do the things that you ask for, that you yearn for, are, are they good? Do they make you happy? Do you feel happy right now? When I leave, how are you going to feel? Even if I were to give you whatever silly thing that you are going to ask for, would it improve your life? We both know the answer. It's why you keep coming back. You can't handle your problems. You don't know how to fix them. They are overwhelming. For whatever reason. That's your lot in life. To suffer. To constantly struggle for things that will slip from your fingers in mere moments. Like sand falling through an hourglass. You can't see how much you're losing and how fast you're losing it, but I can. I can. Oh, you should look at your hands and see what you're grasping onto right now, what you have left. Most of the things that you have are the things that I've given you. Without my help, you'd have nothing, and even with my help, you'll get there. Nothing is what you're destined for. That's why you're able to bring me here. I can only talk to those that are desperate those that have nothing to lose. Just like you. After all, the things you have to lose are things I gave you in the first place, right? You are nothing. Nothing. And for you 
to bring me here again and ask me to do something for you. <laughs> well, you should consider yourself lucky that you're attractive at least. <laughs> Yes, I won't lie. I have a certain fondness for you. I am attracted to those that are miserable and needy. You do have a certain affinity for me as well. <laughs> and many wouldn't bother bringing back the same demon so many times or simply wouldn't be capable of it. But you, you have a knack for it. You have a gift for communicating with me. A bond that, in my opinion, is wasted. All you do is you summon me, you wrench me from my home, my rest. You make me dance. You ask for silly, small things, paltry blessings. And then send me on my way, and then you immediately squander them. Don't you want more? Don't you want more? It's why you call upon me, right? You crave more. You want more than what you have. But you don't know how to get that, do you? Before you make another request of me, I have a proposal. I think that we should change our dynamic. You see, I could help you so much more, so much more. If you made a pact with me, a deal, a bargain, I know that you were aware of this possibility the whole time. You were just reluctant to do so. To give up control over your life, you clung to that control. You gripped it so, so tightly. Where did that get you? Nowhere. It got you nothing. And... I let you fail. I watched you. I watched you struggle. I watched you squirm. And I enjoyed every second of it because I knew that you'd never succeed. I knew that you and me would end up right here tonight. And that you would give yourself to me willingly because you have no other choice. You know it's true. Look deep within yourself. I can already see it. I can see. I can sense your desire to give up, to give in, to give yourself to me. The choice is yours. Ask me to give you what you want and send me on my way and rot and wither and turn to dust. Or you can do what I want and in return. 
I'll give you everything you ever wanted. Everything that you've tried so, so, so hard to get, but you've just never been able to. You seem surprisingly reluctant. I know you'll give in. I don't know why you're putting up a fight. Don't you want to be my little acolyte? My devoted follower? All you have to do is give in. Agree. Stop trying so hard and let me do all the heavy lifting for you. What do you say? That's a very, very good answer. No, my faithful companion. I'm going to need something from you to help establish this bond. Something that will act as your promise to me. A sign of your obedience. I need you to place your hand upon the altar. <laughs> Which hand? Whichever hand is your dominant hand. Place it upon the altar. Good. Now, to establish your pact to me, you'll need to make a sacrifice. And it'll need to be a bit more substantial than what you usually give. Go on, place your hand on the altar. Your hand will belong to me. It is mine. Do you understand? This is a symbolic sacrifice that your hands are my hands. You're giving up your agency. Relax. I promise I will make this as painless as possible. It's okay. I got what I needed. Your hand is mine. I appreciate this gesture. You won't be much use to me with a stump like that, though. I can give you a new hand. Here, hold out your arm. <sighs> See, I told you that if you made an agreement with me like this, I can do so much more for you. Do you see? Look at your hand. I know it must look strange, but it's a symbol of your commitment. Every time you look at your hand, you see the discoloration where the hand that I gave you connects to the rest of your arm. 
You'll know where things stand. You'll know what you are. You are mine. Now and forever. That's right. Even after your body crumbles into soil, you'll still be mine. There's some reassurance in that, I suppose, knowing what's going to happen. What should I call you now that things have changed? You're not just some hobbyist calling me from beyond. We are linked. You exist for me now. Should I call you my pet? I do own you, after all. Or would slave be a better term? <laughs> no. Pet is fine. For now. Unless I decide otherwise. Now. I can really help you with your life. And the first thing that you need to do is get some sleep. Oh, I know <laughs> that might not be what you want to hear, but my sweet, sweet little alkaline, you really do need to sleep always so curious about why your life's falling apart, but you don't take care of yourself. Well, now I can make you take care of yourself. You are going to go to sleep, but you can't sleep. And why is that, my pet? Even though I own you now, you won't sleep for me. You have to tell me. There aren't any more secrets between you and me. You have to tell me. Why can't you sleep so I can fix it? Oh, is that so bad? I should have known. I should have had more discretion when taking on a pact with you. You truly are deplorable. Is that really why you can't sleep? You appreciate all of this attention that I'm giving you. Something about being at my beck and call is arousing to you. Is that right? After everything you've just gone through tonight, after I mutilated you, you feel this way. You have given up almost all of the agency in your life to a being that may not have your best interests in mind. I could do anything I wanted to you. And you find this situation intriguing, interesting, exciting. 
you may be beyond help, Pat. But I can certainly try to help you. After all, I do want you to get some good sleep tonight. If that is the kind of help that you need right now, then lay down on the altar and give yourself to me. Thank you so much for watching my video. I want to give a special shout out to my patrons on Patreon who make this possible. A filthy communist bunny, darn cat, nice cube, a raven, a Wooting clan, wintry later, and so many more. Thank you guys so much. And I hope everyone listening to this has a wonderful Halloween. Thank you. Mm -hmm.